Justice Department has filed suit against the state of Texas for violating Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. Texas has violated Section 2 by creating redistricting plans that deny or abridge the rights of Latino and black voters to vote on account of their race, color, or membership in a language minority group. The Department of Justice is suing the state of Texas over redistricting maps that they say, as you just heard, explicitly discriminate against Latino and black voters. Despite minorities making up 95% of the state's population growth, the suit notes that Texas designed its two new congressional seats to have Anglo voting majorities. The suit also asserts that Texas intentionally eliminated a Latino electoral opportunity in West Texas and failed to draw an encompassing, a seat encompassing the growing Latino electorate in Harris County, which includes Houston. But the situation in Dallas might be the easiest to visualize, where, as the DOJ put it, Texas surgically excised minor minority communities from the core of the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex by attaching them to the heavily Anglo rural counties, some more than 100 miles away. I mean, does this look like a fairly drawn map to you? This comes at a time when Republicans are doing everything they can to make sure that Democrats cannot win more elections. In Ohio, lawmakers are hiring lawyers to defend their maps who worked with a North, their maps who worked with a North Carolina, who worked with a North Carolinian on what a court called one of the largest racial gerrymanderings ever encountered. And in Wisconsin, a group tied to Donald Trump is trying to figure out how to bypass the Senate, the state's Democratic governor, and how to change how elections are run. I'm joined now by Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter, and Jason Johnson is back with me. And Latasha, it's so blatant now, now without, with the Voting Rights Act essentially on death's door, Republicans are doing this openly. You're in the position now of registering and trying to encourage uh, black folks and, and folks to vote. Black Voters Matter is out there doing that. How does this change the context? Because if they're just going to steal the elections, how do we even encourage people to sign up and be a part of the process at all? I think that's an excellent question. I think that's why we have to do more. That yes, while we're gonna organize, we've been very clear from the beginning um, with this administration and with Congress that we can't out-organize what's happening to us right now, right? And that it is going to take federal legislation. We're going to have to put pressure on federal legislation. I think it's quite ironic that the president is hosting a democracy summit with world leaders, yet right in his own backyard, what we're seeing is we're seeing efforts to actually undermine and marginalize black voters and brown voters all across this country. So if we want to talk about democracy, as my grandmother used to say, charity begins at home. Yeah, I mean, we, let's look at this Texas redistricting plan. White voters account, account for 40 percent of the population, but they get 60 percent of the districts. Hispanic voters are 39 percent of the population. They only get 18 percent. Black voters are 12 percent. They get none <laughs> They have the new districts. I mean, Jason, it's not subtle. No, no, it's not subtle. And I mean, the, these districts they make look like a Dexter blood splatter. They're just pieces here and there that are just convenient for whatever the Republicans want. And it, and the, the concern is, and Latasha sort of points this out, you know, being in Georgia and parts of the South, the concern is even if you can organize, the legislation that is being passed in a lot of these states has basically said the state can step in and throw out whatever the results are exactly. if they don't like them. This is an emergency. And I know this is something that hasn't been done in 50, 60 years. But you know what happened when the federal government said, hey, Brown versus Board of Education, we've got to integrate schools? They sent troops. They sent federal officials to places and said, you will let black children into school. This administration can say, we have concerns about how elections are being conducted in this particular state. We're going to send officials down there. We're gonna send election observers. If we think the people's civil rights are being violated, we will do a federal takeover. I know lots of people are gonna scream about this, the right workers is gonna scream. This is what the federal government is supposed to do. If states are violating people's civil rights, you're supposed to step in. And we know perfectly well that the courts alone are not going to be good enough for this because by the time this gets up to the handmaid and all those other people hiding in the Supreme Court, they're going to say that what Texas is doing is fine. So in order for this government, for the Biden administration to save next year's elections, they're going to have to get aggressive and they're going to have to get creative about protecting people's rights. And let's be clear. Just because you pass legislation doesn't guarantee Democrats win. Look what happened in Virginia. But right. it does guarantee that people have a right to vote, and that's something everybody should be allowed to do regardless of party. Oh, I mean, maybe they better go back and get Eric Holder, because I'm not sure Merrick the Mild is going to do any of those things that you just mentioned. Let me listen, because a lot of this is also personal in Georgia. And you're in Georgia, um, Latasha, so let me let me play David Perdue. So David Perdue is fresh off of, you know, the controversies about whether he tried to enrich himself off of COVID, um, and he's running again. He now wants to run 
uh, for governor, and he wants to run against Brian Kemp, who Trump is mad at for not fixing the election for him after the fact. Here he is making it very personal about why he's running. To fight back, we simply have to be united. Unfortunately, today, we're divided, and Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger are to blame. Look, I like Brian. This isn't personal. It's simple. He has failed all of us and cannot win in November. Think about how different it would be today if Kemp had fought Abrams first instead of fighting Trump. I'm David Perdue. I'm running for governor to make sure Stacey Abrams is never governor of Georgia. Make no mistake, Abrams will smile, lie, and cheat to transform Georgia into her radical vision of a state that would look more like California or New York. And let me be very clear. Over my dead body, will we ever give Stacey Abrams control of our elections again? Okay. That's what, the first one was him attacking Brad Raffensperger and Brian Kemp. But I mean, Latasha, that is very personal. But it is clear that it isn't just David Perdue. Fulton County, Georgia, is what they're talking about. They are angry that Fulton County delivered two Democratic senators for the Democrats. And if Stacey Abrams manages to get through all the hoops and let's say win the popular vote in Georgia, it isn't just David Perdue, it's the current people who could simply reverse the election in Fulton County and hand it over to that guy. Your thoughts? Absolutely, that's part of the reason why we were fighting SB 202. You know, right now, I have actually less voting protection in the state of Georgia than I did a year ago, right? And so when we're looking, they're doing that already. When we're looking at Deborah Purdue, I was looking at the commercial, and it's really amazing how they have just mastered lying. That the fact of the matter that you start off with unifying, while, but I'm going to take on the incumbent government. That's a lot of unity right there, right? And so I think in the, what we're seeing is the Republican Party is imploding. The Republican Party is imploding in Georgia. I do think that it is going to be an uphill battle because they've weaponized the administrative process. But I do want to remind people, since 2018, we, the Democrats have actually captured two congressional seats, two Senate seats, three state Senate seats, and 12, um, 12 House of Representatives seats. I'm saying that to the extent that the state is becoming more diverse and actually more progressive. And I don't know whether he's planning his funeral or not, but I guess he needs to get ready to figure out how he's going to do this over his dead body. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Georgia already looks like California and New York. Hollywood is in Atlanta. They're shooting more movies in Atlanta than they might be shooting in New York and California. When he's saying look like California and New York, he doesn't mean he doesn't want that money, Jason. He means the people of color. That it, It's a pretty open yeah. dog whistle. Because what else do you mean by look like New York and California? Your thoughts. I mean, at this point, it's a klaxon. And, and here's the thing. It's actually a really terrible commercial because if you're trying to triangulate, it's like, I don't like Brian Kemp. I'm going to stop Stacey Abrams. You're, you're talking about a, a smaller slice of the population. One thing, and, and Latasha knows this very well, we all know this very well, Metro Atlanta has been growing at like 1,500 people every two weeks for like three years now. People coming to that state like Stacey Abrams. She has remained one of the most popular politicians in America by being dedicated dedicated to her state, never being a sore loser and being focused on something crazy and, and generally politically neutral, like allowing people to have access to the vote. Purdue is an absolute idiot if he thinks that running his entire campaign on hating Stacey Abrams is going to win it for him. I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you, but somebody who just moved to Metro Atlanta from Cleveland, Ohio, they don't hate Stacey Abrams. That's not going to motivate them. When you see that kind of campaigning, it shows you not only that the Republican Party is bankrupt, but they pretty much think the only way they can win is by stoking racial fears and cheating because that ain't policy. That's a personal diss track and it didn't make any sense. You know, and, and Latasha, I mean, the work that you've done, the work that Stacey's done, the work that Fair Fight and your organizations, I mean, the, the, Georgia is very, is very registered. That is not, that wasn't the case when Stacey Abrams ran the first time. But can you talk to, you, you spoke a little bit about the president, but the Biden administration told y'all and has been very mild about the threat here because I think they're assuming that Stacey Abrams' popularity, that the things that Jason just said about people liking her is enough and that you're, and that you're gonna go out there and fix this, that your organization will fix this at the ballot box, that they don't have to do anything about it in terms of the law. You know, it's a challenge if I were to think about sports. Who wants to play a sports game when the referees are already gonna go to cheat? Right. The bottom line is the people who are in charge of the process have already openly said that they want to cheat. Right. You had the cheater in chief 
saying that why aren't you cheating in Georgia? And then what you saw right after that is you saw legislation that actually legalized what it is that he was asking for. And so I think it's really important. I agree that I think when we're looking at the Biden administration right now, we're talking about it's not like the Democrats don't have a tool, right? This right. attachment to the filibuster is creating harm all across this country, not just for black voters, but it actually is a part of supporting, I think, what you when you talk about um, political corruption, that anytime people are punished because of who they voted for or how they voted, that in itself is a definition of corruption. So we're talking about pre preserving democracy or any element of democracy in this country. We should be responding, right, when we're looking at the drawing of maps, not just in Texas, but in Georgia, where the Republicans have drawn the maps in such a way that they have an advantage, although 100 percent of all the population yep. growth in the state of the people of color. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, DOJ's got to do more than have a, a mild press conference. There's got to be some action. Joe Madison is literally still on a hunger strike. He's 72 years old. He should not have to be on a hunger strike in 2021 in America. Latasha Brown, Jason Johnson, thank you both very much. Still out on the readout. New York City launches what it calls a preemptive strike against a winter resurgence of COVID with its most far-reaching vaccine mandates yet. This as the Republican death cult doubles down on spreading dangerous vaccine misinformation. We'll be right back.